Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is a video about the Dell T3610 server as part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So to begin with, the, this is the server that I've uh, chosen for my home lab as an upgrade. I previously had some Dell T5500s and HP Z800s. However, um, the beta of vSphere 7 showed that the processors that were in them were no longer going to be supported. They were Xeon X55 and X5600. So I've decided to change my lab and move to uh, a, a new style of server based on the Xeon E5 version 2. Um, so this is the server that I've selected. It supports a single processor, and that can be anything from an E5-1603 all the way up to an E5-1650. I have seen articles on the internet that say it would officially support a 1680. Um, so although the official Dell spec doesn't say that that is a supported configuration, other people have had success with that. What I will say about that is if you start off with the 1603, which one of my servers came with, uh, because that's only a quad core processor, you only end up with four cores. Um, I've replaced all of mine now with the 1650, which is this one down here, uh, because it's a six core with hyper threading, give you a total of 12 execution threads, uh, a massive improvement from the four that I started with. Uh, memory, it supports anything from 4 gig up to 128 gig. My, uh, mine have anywhere between 64 and 128 gig over the eight slots. Um, you, you may need something like 128 gig for some of the more uh, advanced VMware products, um, but the memory is still cheap enough to make it affordable. It's DDR3, either at 1600 or 1866 megahertz, and it can be ECC or non-ECC. So ECC being error checking and correcting, a, a more advanced technology sometimes used in servers. Um, the onboard networking card is an Intel 82579. It works with all the beta versions of vSphere 7 and the current GA version, so it's a supported network card. Um, but what I need to say about all of this is, um, when I say it's supported, I mean that from a home lab point of view it's supported. That does not necessarily mean that this is on the VMware hardware compatibility list. So just to stress that, this is fine for a home lab, lab and for testing, but this is not suitable for production. And the motherboard chipset is an Intel C602. So that's the server that I've gone for. I've decided to go for four of these to, to create a little cluster uh, and then to replace my existing T5500s and HP Z800s. So what's the server got inside it? So it's a, a mixture of PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 2. Um, and just for some clarity on this, a PCI X slot, sorry, PCI slot can be... Um, a, a specific configuration, i.e. a time 16 slot, but it may be that only certain lanes in that slot are wired. So the example here is that it's got two time 16 slots that are wired as time 16, but it's also got a 16 slot, but it's only got the performance of an eight lane slot. So the physical slot is 16, the performance is only times eight. Um, and the same again here with the PCI Express 2. We've got a 16 wired as a four, and a one wired as a one. This will become a little bit more apparent on a on a on a next slide. Um, it's also got a legacy PCI slot, just in case you've got any older cards. I doubt that anything you plug in here is going to be supported by vSphere, but it does have that uh, additional PCI slot as well. There are six channels in total. Two of them are SATA three, and four of them are SATA two. And it's got quite a few USB ports. It's got four USB three ports on the front six USB 2 on the back and a USB 2 internal which we'll use for um, an internal fan in a, in a subsequent video. So just to give you an idea uh, what what it looks like with the lid off, the, the, the RAM is in two different banks so there's a bank of four sticks here above the processor and another bank of four sticks underneath the processor and this is a, a plastic baffle where the air comes in through the front and is directed over the memory stick so these uh, two black things you see there are, are to keep the memory cool. Um, there's then the processor fan, um, and processor and processor fan, so it's a sing again single CPU. Um, air comes from the front and moves over, so this is a tall heatsink with a fan blowing air out of the back here. There are five PCIe um, slots and one PCI slot. Um, there are two different types of power supply available, a 685 watt and a 425 watt. 
There's then two three and a half inch hard drive bays, um, which I've repurposed for SSDs. There is also an, uh, a CD-ROM at the front of the server, and a spare five and a quarter bay. Should you want to add more um, uh, hard drives, um, CD-ROMs, or uh, fans. And then there's a plastic baffle, which you'll see here on some photographs, which allows the air that comes in through the front to pass through here and uh, through the PSU. So this is a removable part. On some photos this will be included, on some it won't. The SATA connectors are under here. So just to explain that PCI Express thing, um, here's an overhead view of the motherboard with a couple of cards in. Uh, and just to stress here that the PCI Express 3 ones are done in red. We have two that are the full time 16 speed, and then we have a time 16 slot which is only wired with eight uh, lanes. We then have two PCI Express 2 slots, a times one wired as a times one, and a times 16 wired as a times four. Um, unless you're doing really high-end graphics, you probably aren't too bothered about the performance or speed of these. Lots of my quad port network cards still only come with a, a times one slot. So um, for, for learning purposes and for most purposes, these are fine. But if you've got a graphics card, maybe you want to stick it in a times 16 slot uh, instead of any of the other ones. As I said before, a, a, a free PCI slot, I very much doubt that any... Any cards that you can put in there are going to be supported in vSphere 7, but it but it is available. And then this is interesting, there's a USB slot internally, which we'll use to add an additional fan in a future video. So this is the view of the SATA uh, channels with that black baffle removed. And these two on the far right hand side of SATA 3, so put the SSDs or drives that you want the best performance from in there and these are for SATA 2 and what I've done on mine is make sure that the CD-ROM, the internal one, is connected to this first one here uh, because uh, it's the lowest performance and I've made sure that my largest SSDs are connected to the faster ones here. And this is what the board looks like uh, from, a, from an overhead view. Uh, you may want to pause the video at this point um, and just look at this in more detail but this is an overview of, of how the board uh, looks uh, from a circuit board point of view with all the slots and components uh, this is just a screenshot of the server um, running vSphere 7 this is the host view so I have no vCenter server in this screenshot although this box is connected to a vCenter server this is a view hitting the server directly on the host client and you'll see from this that it's running vSphere 7.00 which is the GA build that came out a couple of days ago and subsequent videos will talk more about this. So that was my um, introductory video about the Dell T3610 server as part of the vSphere 7 home lab. Thank you for your time and I hope you found this useful.